about funny things, although it's not terribly common, it, it does happen. And, um, the thing is, is if you don't know what to do, and you take proper precautions, it's relatively safe. Hello, this is Colonial Puppet, and recently I took a bit of a road trip. It was about two and a half hours round trip to pick up a lot of vintage Apple equipment that I saw on the Facebook marketplace. The lot consisted of three original Apple boxes, two of which being for the Platinum Apple IIe, and the third box being for a color Apple monitor. The first Apple IIe box housed an Apple IIe Platinum with a five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. The second Apple IIe box housed an Apple Image Writer 2 dot matrix printer with its original power cord. And lastly, the Apple Color Monitor box housed an Apple Color Monitor specifically for the Apple IIe. One interesting thing to note is that every piece of equipment in this lot had this little sticker saying that it had once belonged to a school district. And what's even more interesting is the school district on the sticker is actually a few minutes down the road from where I currently live. In fact, the shipping labels on all of these boxes is addressed to a local bookstore that I had actually been into not even a week before picking this equipment up. So long story short, I drove several hours to pick up a computer which was essentially in my backyard over 30 years ago. How it wound up several states over, I guess I will never know. And as for the school district stickers, I'm definitely leaving them on the computer and the equipment just because it's a cool little insight into the history that these computers had before winding up at my house. And it's also important to note just how immaculate the condition that this equipment was in given that it was once serving a school district. Aside from some yellowing as well as some dust and some scratches, this equipment looks almost brand new, which is strange considering that school computers usually see a lot of use in their day and are usually pretty badly abused by these students. Get the hell out of here. So to find a complete school computer in such good condition and with some original boxes no less is pretty rare. So I don't know, my guess would be maybe that it belonged to a teacher or a member of the faculty, who knows. I was just pretty psyched to get a full Apple II kit like this and the seller told me that it was all in working order. And when I got home and plugged everything in and fired up the computer and the monitor, I saw that everything was in fact in working order. So naturally I took the logical next step and fired up a game of the original Oregon Trail. But after about five or 10 minutes of trailblazing action, I started to hear a hissing noise coming from the Apple IIe. And that hissing was immediately followed by smoke and a really bad burning electrical smell. So without hesitation, I quickly powered off the Apple IIe as well as the monitor and I made sure everything was unplugged. So what was it exactly that happened to my Apple II? Well, to be honest, it's something that I probably should have expected and is actually quite common with the Apple IIs, more specifically their power supplies. In fact, it was pretty dumb of me to even turn on the Apple II without first addressing this problem that has plagued or will plague pretty much every Apple II in existence. The issue that I'm talking about is the failure or failures of what are commonly referred to as reefa capacitors in the Apple II's power supply. They are referred to as reefa capacitors simply because that is the brand of capacitor. In my case, it was one filter capacitor, and reefa capacitors are pretty easy to spot inside your PSU. One probably because they blew up, but if not, uh, they are a pretty distinct yellow color and are made of a hard acrylic. And unfortunately, I didn't record myself removing the problem capacitor from my power supply just because I didn't really know I was going to make a video about it at the time. And I was just focused on making sure that my newly acquired Apple II was as happy as possible and all of the capacitor juice was cleaned up from inside the power supply. But don't worry because in this video, I will go over the process of disassembling the power supply of your Apple II as well as how to install a replacement for a bad reefa capacitor, and then lastly, how to put your Apple II back together. 
Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you how to remove the power supply from your Apple II. You don't actually need any tools to open up your Apple II. You just have to pull out on these two tabs on the back and then lift up and the lid should just come right off. Once the computer is open, I'm going to remove this super serial card from its expansion slot so it doesn't get in the way when I remove the power supply. So first, I'm going to undo this ribbon cable right here and then the card should just pull right out. Next, I'm going to unplug the power supply from the main logic board. To do this, I use a screwdriver to undo these two clips while pulling up on the cable itself, and if you do it correctly, it should pop right out. Once the power supply is unplugged, I'm going to flip over the computer to expose the screws that are holding the power supply in that we need to remove. And as you can see, it is these four screws that are holding the power supply in place that we're going to have to get rid of. So I start by removing these two diagonal screws, then I use my free hand to hold the power supply up against the bottom of the case while I undo the remaining two screws so that it doesn't fall out once the remaining screws are removed. Then I flip the computer back over. Now with nothing holding the power supply in place, I carefully slide it out of the computer case making sure not to hit any of the expansion cards. And with that, we can move on to disassembling the power supply itself. There are a total of 10 screws, 5 on either side of the power supply that you're going to have to remove in order to open it up. With those screws removed, this metal lid should just pop right off. Next, I'm going to remove these six screws that are holding the circuit board down to this enclosure. Next comes the tedious step of removing this cable from the enclosure. Basically what I did was I turned it counterclockwise and with some finagling it should be able to pop out eventually. Then once that cable is undone I can pull out the circuitry a couple of inches to give myself some more room to work. Next I carefully undo these two cables from the power switch. which should allow me even more room to work. Here is where the exploded capacitor was. This would be the point where I show you how to remove it. But unfortunately, like I said, I did not film that process. However, it is a pretty simple process. I just used solder wick to soak up the solder around the two leads of the capacitor, and then it just pulled right out. You can see here I'm using some alcohol to clean up where the capacitor had once been. I'm doing this just to make sure that I got all of the capacitor juice when I initially opened up this PSU to remove the problem capacitor. There was capacitor juice everywhere and it was kind of gross. So uh, I did most of the cleanup at that point, but this is just in case I missed anywhere and just to make sure it was as clean as possible before inserting the new capacitor. Okay, and now I'm ready to replace the capacitor. Here is the replacement filter capacitor that I got from reactivemicro.com. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can buy your own capacitor if this also happened to your Apple II. And as you can see, the two leads of the new capacitor are a little bit closer together than the old one. But but this shouldn't be a problem because you can see on the circuit board that the space for the capacitor fits more than one size of filter capacitor. So next I'm going to carefully expose the underside of the PSU circuit board. And then I'm going to apply some flux to the two traces that the capacitor is going to use. And before I do any soldering, I'm just going to use some solder wick to clean up the two traces. Then I'm going to simply fit the new capacitor into place. And then with a little bit of solder, this repair is complete. Here you can see the new capacitor is fit snugly in place. Now it's just a matter of reassembling everything that we disassembled earlier.
I could be reading this wrong, but the date on this serial number makes me think that this computer was manufactured the second week of 1987. Before putting the lid back onto the Apple II, I thought this would be a good time to clean off the minor scuffs and scratches with some alcohol. And overall give the case a light cleaning. And then once the lid is back on, this computer is officially fixed. Now it's time to plug it in and test to see if the repair was a success. And thankfully the repair was a success. As you can see there is no smoke coming from the Apple II and it is running as if it were brand new. So I hope you found this video helpful if your Apple II's power supply blew up on you. Or at least entertaining if you just want to watch old computers get repaired. I don't know. But as always this has been Colonial Puppet. Have a nice day.